Hello, my name is Mr. Hill. Um, I'm a DT teacher um, in the Midlands, and today we're just going to go through a little bit um, of GCSE product design theory, uh, starting with design strategies. So you'll see this is the first time I've put this vi uh, a video up like this. So when it comes up next, uh, the front of it is slightly chopped off. I definitely don't do that in lesson, um, but I'm not so au okay fait with. Uh, this so uh, please bear with me but uh, I hope you enjoy and it's useful okay uh, welcome to the channel um, my name is Mr Hill and we're going to be having a quick uh, discussion about uh, design strategies um, and this is part of AQA um, GCSE design and technology product design theory so there's a bit of um, exam prep uh, within this. So we're going to go through many different uh, sections um, that you can see. So we've got a uh, systems approach, um, user-centered design, iterative design, collaboration, client involvement, user involvement, expert opinion, and modeling. So without further ado, let's crack on. So uh, we're going to focus on three different design strategies. Um, we've got our three here. So iterative design, user-centered, and systems thinking. Now, these will reference many products um, that you will have at home and um, were designed using one of these or a combination of three. Okay, so let's just quickly go through these. So iterative design. So these ones have a, uh, a whole cyclic approach um, to design. So each iteration of design is tested and evaluated. And this essentially means that they can make changes um, leading to new iterations, hence the name. So a good example of this is a Dyson product, um, particularly their Hoovers, when they may start with one prototype, test, evaluate, make a change, and then develop another one and another one and another one. So there's many, many iterations. Also, the, the ideas are the lead rather than the outcome. So they will start with an idea, explore that idea through modeling, and then they will change that as the uh, iterations develop. So one advantage of this is that uh, problems are easily discovered. So when you make your prototype, you can identify those problems and make the changes that you need. Um, it also encourages uh, focus on critical aspects. So you're able to analyze and interrogate each iteration um, quite in depth um, and make those changes as necessary. And also during that process, you can gain your user feedback. So as a GCSE student, it's really important that we gain, that we consistently refer to our specification and our brief. Iterative design allows you to do that quite easily. Now, there are disadvantages um, to using iterative design. It does take a long time. And if you have to make many, many prototypes, this can obviously be costly um, and time consuming for our GCSE students. However, just because you're using this design strategy, it doesn't mean that you have to use, you have to make 10, 20, 30 different types. You can make those decisions quite quickly. So that's kind of uh, iterative design um, encapsulated very, very uh, briefly. And we'll talk a little bit about more examples of those um, later on, or possibly actually in the next video, we'll have a think. Um, so the next one is user-centered design. Now, this, all of this discussion around user-centered design, products, whilst they're being developed, is all about that end user and the needs and wants of that end user. And it's extensively considered um, through each stage of the design process. So uh, Apple products are a really good example of this. Um, they are really, really interested in the user experience. Uh, they will use user-centered design amongst other design strategies, but uh, they will consider how people interact with the product, um, how it feels, how it holds, how it uh, sits in the hands of the ergonomics of a particular product. Um, and at, a, at each stage um, of that development of that product, for instance, like the iPhone, they will, um, they will develop ways to gain feedback from their potential end user. So a real good advantage of user-centered design uh, as a strategy 
is the end user feels obviously listened to and has a greater ownership of the product. They've contributed to its development. So there's a certain amount of uh, sentimentality there um, and uh, it's personal to them. So that's one advantage. Also, it, it meets those user expectations. Um, you've got the product made and you actually know at that point if all of the feedback has been taken on board and acted on, you also know that actually this is going to work for them. Uh, because they've contributed and they've been explicit in their needs. So on the flip side, a disadvantage of using user-centered design is sometimes we need extra time to meet with those end users. Um, and they can be through focus groups, uh, questionnaires, uh, board meetings. Um, you can do Voxbox on the, on the street, surveys. And that all takes time. So if you're in a rush to get this product developed, obviously you can't meet these uh, potential end users every day. You want to meet them at certain points during the development that will better shape the progress and development of your particular product. And that takes time. Sometimes designers um, and GCSE students can become too focused um, on a particular end user and actually they ignore the wider public. So if I'm making a children's toy, it's, it's, it's obvious to think that actually my end user will be the child. However, the parents are integral to that process. Actually, one could argue that they are the end user. They are the purchaser and a consumer of that product. So we don't want to ignore them either. Uh, the final one that we're going to have a look at is systems thinking. Now, this is kind of the antithesis, really, of user-centered design in that it's often used when designing electronic and mechanical systems. Uh, it has a top-down approach that starts with an overview of the system um, in terms of the input process and output. So where we might, not, where uh, on the other two design strategies, we might consider things like ergonomics, um, interaction, the touch, the feel, the sensory properties of a particular product. In systems thinking, we're kind of interested in what's inside the brains of the product. I always use a projector as a really good example. Um, GCSE students are always familiar with the projector. It sits in their classroom. And actually, a systems thinking design strategy will be used to develop something like a projector, merely because we're interested in how that projector works um, and how we program and how that electronic system is made up. And actually, if we used user-centered design as a strategy to develop that product, it wouldn't really help because we need a very logical, um, structured way to start designing the interior. And the exterior of a projector, one could argue that it's not necessarily the main um, desire for their end user. So iterative design, we might not use many prototypes. Uh, we're pretty clear on how the projector is encased and it's plastic or metal or shell. Um, so systems thinking would be used for that. Now, the advantages of using the systems thinking uh, design strategy is that it doesn't, you don't need to be an electronics genius um, or a mechanic uh, to, to do a, a design overview. Top-down approach is easy to communicate how the system will work. Because we use top-down approach, so it can go from pressing the projector on and all of the all of the moments uh, and implications of that input uh, and the process is described all the way until you get your output, which is obviously the image on the screen um, when you're projecting. Now, the disadvantage of systems thinking is if unnecessary components are used, it can lead to longer systems and extra cost. So one way to design a uh, to, to design using systems thinking is things like flowcharts, um, computer programming tools like Python um, or C and they they are used uh, to define the process or the in the interior of a particular product and how it works, um, electronically speaking, and sometimes people can add things into that process that are unnecessary, they're unnecessary steps. And that can obviously take longer and it has an extra cost. One, because you're 
it takes more time to do that. And also electrical components can be quite expensive, especially if you are mass producing those um, products. So let's, now that we've had a look at uh, the three design strategies, let's have a look at some designers that um, use those. Now, these are pretty, these are pretty um, simple ones and I want you to have a think about other ones that you can attribute to the design processes. So iterative designer, as mentioned before, a really good one is Dyson. Um, user-centered design, Apple. The Apple Watch is a fantastic example of user-centered design. They spend a lot of time um, developing how users uh, feel when they when they do when they swipe on their watch um, and the sensitivity of that. And they can only really gain feedback from that whilst users are doing it. And systems thinking, a uh, chipboard or your fuse board at home is a really good example of that. Okay. So it has a particular job to do. So we would use systems thinking um, design strategy when we're, when we're putting something like that together. And it, um, you would think of it in terms of input process and output. It's extremely logical. So those are your designers um, and companies that you can reference when answering particular questions on uh, design strategies. So in each one of these, we've got different ways, physical ways of developing our designs so in iterative design, we might use prototyping, sketching, exploded drawings, annotation, and 3D sketching. Those are all ways to develop quick uh, iterations of a particular design. Now, what we might not do for iterative design is we might not use uh, schematic drawings or uh, mathematical modeling. They wouldn't be suitable for that design strategy. Similarly, user-centered design we might hold discussions and focus groups all the while while testing through client trials or evaluating the questionnaires that they fill out. And in the same way that we wouldn't use mathematical modeling for iterative design, we might not use exploded drawings for user-centered design as much because actually user-centered design, like discussed before, is all based on the user experience. And we can't gain feedback on that through drawings or um, 3D sketching. So you can go on to GCSE Bite Size, and this is a screen uh, cap of the video that they show on there, and it's absolutely, it's fantastic. It shows a really good example of um, all the design strategies, but uh, mostly user-centered design. So we'll finish up there, and I hope that's been sort of um, useful in describing uh, the processes and around design strategies and some examples. I'd love to hear your comments below. Um, it's the first video we're doing, so make sure that um, you like, subscribe, and then come back um, and we'll see what the next theory lesson will do is. All right, thank you.